My name is Yvette Lozano. I practice medicine in Dallas, Texas, and have been doing so for the last 20 years. I am an activist, and that began when Obamacare showed up. The reason I'm here today is because I want you to know the truth about this virus. I am currently treating COVID patients in my office. Let's start just with some simple numbers, and we've heard these numbers, but I want you to think about them. 330 million people in the United States of America. 29 million people in the state of Texas. 2 million people in Dallas. 111 dead. Now, when you see those numbers, it kind of shocks you that we could stop society for 111 deaths. Let me explain how they do it. Here is how it is notified to you. 27,000 positive COVID tests, 3,000 recovered, 111 dead. Well, if 3,000 are recovered from 127,000 positive tests, that's 124,000 that have recovered, right? Because we've only got 111 deaths. The things that I'm gonna tell you today are from my personal experience in my office. I don't want to bring statistics from other physicians because there's always someone on the left that wants to contradict me. So these are my experiences, patients that have walked into my office, and here's how they present. These patients present with a fever, a fever like the fever that you get with malaria. It comes on at night. They have night sweats. These patients present with cough only elicited with deep breath. So they are short of breath. Their lungs are tight, as though you would notice with an asthmatic attack. But most importantly, these patients present in panic. They are afraid. They are anxious. They're actually afraid to get diagnosed. They have been staying at home for days and not coming into the office. Why is that? Well, that's real simple. When they go to the emergency room, they're turned away. If they have a fever, they're sent home and told to quarantine to save the rest of society. During those many precious days when they're sent away and sent home, they infect their family members. And so a lot of my patients are in groups of families, okay? This is not just happening in the emergency rooms. This is happening in doctor's clinics. These doctors that are not opening their practice, that are all of a sudden implementing telemedicine. Let me tell you something. From a physician that's been practicing for 29 years, I can't examine you through a computer screen. We can't Facebook or FaceTime for me to see what's wrong with you. I have to touch you. It's called a physical exam. And this is what I went to medical school, to provide care in the midst of a pandemic, not to hide in my fancy home with my fancy cars and my family. Okay, now, let's go a little step further. Let's talk about treatment, okay? You would think that I would get some kind of guidance from the American Medical Association, the Texas Medical Association, the Dallas County Medical Association. Well, I was on a live telecast, and here's what I heard from the Texas Medical Association. We need to increase visas to bring in foreign medical doctors to help us take care of COVID patients. Really? Are you kidding me? Now, the things that I tell you are personal experience. I was on that call. Needless to say, that was my last call, right? Okay, so where and how did I learn how to treat COVID patients? Well, I'm gonna tell you, I learned it from the president the United States, Donald Trump. So, when this pandemic started, President Trump was giving daily interviews to the media. And he came across, because you realize as President of the United States, he's dealing with heads of states of other countries. And he came across a treatment protocol that had been successful in France. Yes, one doctor had treated 29 patients and every single patient had survived and every single patient had improved and President Trump thought that that was newsworthy. God forbid he shared that with doctors. We didn't receive any advance 
from the local medical agencies that we all pony up our money to belong to and become members of. So I wrote these things down. I wrote these medications down. And I waited and waited for my COVID patients that just didn't come in. Because you see, they were going to hospitals and emergency rooms, and they were going to employee clinics looking for treatment, and they were being sent home and told to quarantine for 14 days. Don't come out. Protect the community. Well, what about them? What about their health? So they started slipping through the cracks and calling me. Are you open? Hell yes. Can I come in? Absolutely. That's what I make the big bucks on. And as they came in, I implemented the only thing that I had heard that had worked in other countries. Countries that had been inflicted with this virus before we even knew its name. And so I wrote a prescription. And I sent them home. And I added a little bit to the protocol that President Trump gave as I'm a physician, and it's called the practice of medicine. So I gave them a couple of shots. Yes, antibiotic shots in the butt. Not one single one denied them. And guess what I found? To my surprise, the very next day, they were all amazingly better. I was actually surprised. Within 24 hours, the patient was completely symptom free. And here's the take home message for all of you. It's called hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine. It costs $13. $13. It's been on the market for 60 years. It is the candy for lupus. It is considered a vitamin for arthritis patients. And for some reason, those bureaucrats that are standing next to our president that think that they know more about medicine than I do are telling me I can't use it. In, in fact, not only are they telling me I can't use it, in two states it's completely illegal to prescribe this, right? Most of my colleagues are afraid to use it because the agencies that they work for have told them that the risk is too high. Liability, it hasn't been FDA approved. Well, FDA can approve you know what on my behind. I have patients at Lozano Medical Clinic that are cured of this disease. I have patients that recovered within 48 hours. In fact, the illness that they had was more caused by the stress and the fear of the propaganda that's being spewed on the news media than by the actual virus. Okay. Now, I'm going to shock you a little bit more. After my first or second or third script to the pharmacy, which again, readily available, $15 for hydroxychloroquine, $15 for Zithromax, I got a phone call from the pharmacist. He wanted to talk to me. He wanted me to tell him what the diagnosis was for my patient number one and what was the diagnosis for patient B and patient C. And I very quickly told him that I did not have to give him that information. Remember HIPAA? Wait a minute, it gets worse. Here's what the pharmacist told me. I'm not gonna prescribe this, I'm not gonna fill it, I'm not gonna dispense it without a diagnosis. I told him, this is privileged information between me and the patient. Your job is to put the pills in the bottle. Here's what I found out. Remember we talked about the freedoms and the liberties that we're losing without you and me even knowing that we're losing them? Okay, here it goes, guys. Every time you go to the pharmacy, the pharmacy board has stated that those two prescriptions starting in early March will not be dispensed by a pharmacist unless it comes with a diagnosis. Now, I have fought with them. I have yelled at them, I've slammed the phone at them, I've called political leaders such as Senator Bob Hall to fight the pharmacy board with me. We have made, Bob Hall, we have made progress, but to no avail. If I do not give a diagnosis, this medication that is life-saving, in my opinion, will not be dispensed by the pharmacist. His hands are tied. Now gets even a little worse than that because I figured out how to get around that. And I'll tell my fellow physicians, you want to you want to prescribe hydroxychloroquine? Patient has hypertension. You want to prescribe hydroxychloroquine? All they want is a diagnosis. How about diabetes? You want to prescribe hydroxychloroquine? Hey, let's do cholesterol, right? There we go. 
And trust me, I've been on the phone with the pharmacy board. I've left messages. So that's how I'm going to do it because I swore to protect the identity and confidentiality of my patients. And I will continue to do that. I think when we do things that are incorrect, we need to be thrown under the bus. So here's the latest from the medical field, okay? If you have a prescription for hydroxychloroquine and you happen to want to fill this at Walgreens, and yes, I want Walgreens and their administrators and administrative offices to hear me, they have instructed their pharmacists to give you a friendly call and to let you know they more than welcome to come in through the drive through you're not welcome to come into their stores. If you're taking a prescription for hydroxychloroquine, they're gonna personally call you and tell you that they want you to come through the driveway. Well, you know what? Maybe later they'll ask you to wear a yellow star on your shirt. So, starting last week when I discovered that this was renowned upon Walgreens, I've decided and encouraged all of my patients to go elsewhere. Now, here's what I told the pharmacist. I am from the time of AIDS, a general surgeon by training. When we went into the operating room, we didn't have a good test for HIV. So all of us assumed that every single patient on that surgical table was infected with HIV and we protected ourselves appropriately. I don't believe that we need to discriminate because patients have contacted this virus, which as was stated is 98% treatable with no medication. 98% of people recover. For those 2% that are sick, the President of the United States has given us a phenomenal protocol that I'm telling you in my patient population between the ages of 30 and 55 are responding phenomenally. Okay? So here's how we're going to treat our COVID patients. I'm going to treat every patient walking into the office as though he has COVID. But I'm not gonna make him feel like he's a leopard or has leprosy. And I'm definitely not gonna discriminate with him. I'm gonna calm him down. I'm gonna reassure him that there's treatment protocols out there. Now my question is, why is the media not doing the same? Why is the media blocking every single post that I make on Facebook in regards to this medication? And where are our politicians that are supposed to be our freedom fighters. I want to hear them yelling it from the mountaintops. And so I am here today to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you, to reassure you that it is not dangerous or scary to go to a restaurant, to go get your hair done, to go shopping. Our immune systems are improved through exposure to sunlight, through gathering, because we are in up moods. Reach out to your physicians. Tell them that you're not scared. Tell them to open their doors. Tell them you don't want to see their assistance. You want to see them. And call your politicians. It's time to open Texas. Thank you, Doug.